This week on Christian World News, an ISIS fighter infiltrates a church in Turkey and was overwhelmed by love. Now he's warning the West about the dangers of radical Islam. Plus, the Ramadan prayer countdown, how 10 ministries all came together for 10 days to reach millions of Muslims. And every year, thousands come to see these beautiful beaches for a dream vacation. But few see the poverty and despair in the Virgin Islands. We take a look at the darker side of paradise. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. My colleague Wendy Griffith is on vacation. I also want to welcome some new viewers to Christian World News. We're broadcasting the first segment of our show live on Facebook today. And we encourage those viewers to send in their questions and comments. Listen to this. An ISIS spy infiltrates a church in Turkey and finds a love he never experienced before. The encounter, guess what, not only changed his life, but as Chris Mitchell tells us, he's now warning others about the dangers of radical Islam. Several years ago, Pastor Ghassan Thomas escaped Baghdad when Islamists threatened him and his family. He went to Turkey and started a church that reached out to other refugees. And I go everywhere because I was a refugee and I can put myself in their shoes and understand them. One day, ISIS sent a spy into Pastor Thomas's church. While this led to a life-changing decision for the spy, it also led to an opportunity for Pastor Thomas to learn more about the terror group. Thomas set up a phone call for CBN News with this man we'll call Mohammed. For his safety, we won't disclose his true identity or location. Welcome, my dear brother. Were you with uh, ISIS or Daesh? Yes. But he's worried about that because he said that on interview, but yes. Thomas told us Mohammed's job within the organization. When ISIS killed a family inside their house, Mohammed would go back and kill anyone who was still alive. At that time, that's how I thought. I thought of killing. I thought of doing many bloody things just to be close to my Allah. He says this bloodlust motivates ISIS. For sure, there will be more and more since it's in the Quran. If you're not a Muslim, you need to be a Muslim or we will kill you and take everything, finances, women and everything. This is in the Quran. Fighting between Sunni ISIS and Shiite militias often put Mohammed's own life in danger. For his safety, family members told him to flee Iraq to Turkey. As a devout Muslim, he obeyed his parents and the opportunity to leave came when ISIS sent him as a spy into Pastor Thomas' church. But Mohammed had his own questions about Jesus. I saw the people how they welcomed me and they didn't even know me. I hated those people and they showed me love. They prayed for Mohammed and it changed his life. When they prayed for me, I started to cry like a child and I felt like something very heavy was coming out of my body. At the end of the service, I went home and it seemed like someone was walking with me, talking to me. I felt like I wasn't on the earth. I felt like I was flying, like someone was carrying me. Then Mohammed read the Bible and compared it to the Quran. I went there and discovered that the God that I want is the God Jesus Christ. He is the right God. Pastor Thomas says Mohammed's change of heart means the church in Europe needs more workers. For this reason, we need some people come and serve God here in Europe mm. with the refugees just to wake them up, yeah. to be like to against what ISIS do. This former ISIS member expects more attacks like Brussels and delivered a warning for Europe. Do you think there's a great danger to Europe right now? For sure. It's, it's a huge thing. They should wake up. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, just outside Vienna, Austria. Thanks, Chris. And Chris now joins us from our bureau in Jerusalem to answer some questions and to respond from, to comments from our Facebook Live audience. Uh, Chris, welcome to the show. Let's go to our first Facebook question. Emily asks, how do you know he really was an ISIS fighter? Well, I had to trust my sources. Pastor Ghassan was one person who had been actually discipling this man, we'll call Mohammed. Others that I knew had met him as well. 
and verified his testimony. Uh, his testimony was consistent with other Muslims who have come to faith in Jesus. Many times they go uh, very skeptical. They go into a church hating people, and many times, sometimes they come out just changed and transformed when they realize that they truly are loved by these people. Uh, Chris, another person is asking the, uh, the, uh, the question, um, he claimed to be a refugee, but was he uh, really a spy? Are there more ISIS fighters who claim to be refugees, and how do we stop them? There are definitely many ISIS uh, who have infiltrated this flood of refugees into Europe, sometimes into the United States as well. The way to stop them is by having a, a robust vetting program uh, of, uh, of coming into either Europe or the United States. Unfortunately, it looks like in Europe they've opened the borders. Uh, right now they're trying to close some of those borders. But this is maybe one of the most dangerous things that are happening in Europe and the United States. For example, there was a counterterrorism expert who told me maybe five to 7,000 jihadists, just like this Mohammed, right now inside Europe, and that poses a great danger. He says the greatest danger since World War II to Europe. Yeah, very, very serious threat indeed. Chris, I'm curious, have you heard reports of other refugees coming uh, into the, uh, on the shores of Europe who are accepting Christ? Yes, in fact, uh, we found that many times. We, we uh, did this particular interview with Mohammed just outside of Vienna, and we went to a, a several services right there, and uh, some of those people had came to faith in Jesus Christ, sometimes through a dream or a vision, sometimes by being invited to a service like we attended. And uh, many times they're very hungry for the gospel. ISIS not only is uh, barbaric, but it is turning off many Muslims to Islam, and they're questioning their own faith. And some of them, and uh, hopefully many more, are turning to Jesus Christ. And I'm sure those who are working on continental Europe are using this as an opportunity to bring yes. more people to Christ and introduce them to the person of Jesus Christ. Chris Mitchell in Jerusalem, sir, thank you so much. Great to be with you, George. Okay, other news. The Islamic holy month of Ramadan ended earlier this week. Hundreds of millions of Muslims around the world observed 30 days of fasting and prayer. Many Christians pray for Muslims during Ramadan, and here at CBN News, our social media team created an unprecedented outreach. They brought together 10 ministries to lead viewers in prayer for the Muslim world over the last 10 days of Ramadan. Broadcast on Facebook Live, those prayers reached more than 7 million people and were viewed by over 500,000 people, surely having a great impact. Are you hearing of other refugees coming to Christ? Obviously, these are unbelievable times that are taking place. Joining me, uh, the person who was the brainchild of CBN News social media uh, here for us was uh, media manager Aisha ba uh, Bascom. She joins us now to tell us about some of the dramatic testimonies that uh, took place. Uh, you know, the ministries that worked with us, they have these amazing stories of, of Muslims coming to Christ. Tell us about that. Yes, they did. Uh, I'll, I'll start with Ishik Alba. She is a phenomenal televangelist who reaches out to Muslim women around the world, actually, mm -hmm. but primarily in the Middle East. And she talks about being a radical Muslim and actually sitting in the mosque with yeah. the imam shouting curses to Christians and Jews mm -hmm. and saying, this is what we want to do to the great Satan, which is how they refer to America. Mm -hmm. And she, the congregation saying, amen, yes, because there was so much hatred, mm -hmm. she said when she was a radical Muslim in the mosque. And going home and her husband beating her, um, spitting on her, and coming to a place where she thought, is this what Islam is about? Yeah. Hatred, hatred in my home, mm -hmm. hatred when I'm with my brothers and sisters in the faith. And eventually she got to a place where it was just too much yeah. and she wanted to commit suicide. So here she is at work in her bathroom, at the job in the bathroom saying to her God, I'm going to commit suicide, it's too much and I, I can't do it anymore. She comes out of the bathroom and her Christian boss says, my God just revealed to me what you're about to do today. Wow. And there is hope. Wow. And that's how she came and to Christ. And this is reality of why we did this thing for 10 days. Talk about the, the prayer initiative and the impact you think that these prayers are going to have, that they've had the last 10 days and going forward. Well, honestly, I don't think that we'll know this side of on this side mm -hmm. of heaven what the true impact is. But what we do know for a fact is that we reached 7 million people. Mm -hmm and that over 500,000 of those people actively watched and engaged in prayer. 
10 ministries coming together mm -hmm. from around the globe. Mm -hmm. That's what's the beautiful thing about social media is that these 10 ministries were able to band together from around the globe and lead believers mm -hmm. into intercessory prayer for Muslims in the Middle East, Iran, Afghanistan, um, and even here in America. Yeah, it's so exciting. Aisha, it you is. were at the forefront. Thank you so much for doing this. And obviously okay. with technology like Facebook and other social media platforms, we have even a greater opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with folks. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, folks, we have much more. Uh, that wraps up our first segment and we'll say goodbye to our Facebook Live audience. If you want to take part in these segments, be sure to follow us on our CWN Facebook page. Okay, next. Up next on Christian World News, darkness descends in Russia. President Vladimir Putin signs a law outlining, outlawing evangelism and cracking down on house churches. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be, but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. And welcome back to Christian World News. Some disturbing news out of Russia. It's about new surveillance and anti-terrorism laws. The laws forbid evangelism outside of churches and other religious sites, that means people can't even share their faith in their homes or even on the Internet. They also restrict missionary work. For example, there can be no preaching, teaching or any activity aimed at bringing people into a religious group. Hanu Hauka is president of Great Commission Media Ministries based in Helsinki, Finland. He's been actively engaged in ministry to Russia for over 40 years and has daily interaction with churches there. He joins us now by Skype. Hanu, what's the reaction by churches uh, in Russia to these new laws? Uh, the church leaders that we have talked to, which means uh, several of them, uh, re representing the main denominations of Russia, the Baptist Union, the Pentecostal Union, they are in confusion. Uh, they, do not, they do not know what to think of this because this law has snuck up on them. Uh, everything has been passed basically in the last eight, nine days. And uh, the churches certainly were not prepared to see this kind of law passed with this speed uh, unhindered in, in, the, in Russian society. I mean, Russia's constitution guarantees freedom of religion. Uh, I mean, for Christians at the core of their faith is to share their faith with non-believers you cannot do this. Is that, my, is that my understanding? You can no longer do this in Russia outside the four walls of the church? Yes. Uh, the essence of the law, I can state a few of their main tenets. One is that religious activity is no longer permitted in private homes in Russia. Unfortunately, most of the 7,000 plus churches in Russia meet in private homes or, or private buildings because they do not have access to public mm -hmm. facilities 
they are not able to rent public facilities and they are not able to get building permits to build churches. So they have for the last 20 years met uh, in, in homes and, and homes that are owned by private individuals. This is no longer permitted. The next thing, one may pray and he may read the Bible at home, but not in the presence of a non-believing person. If you do so, you are breaking the law and you will be punished. If you share your person with a, with a person, for example, on a train ride, uh, you will be detained by the police uh, as soon as that happens, as soon as they discover it, you will be fined $1,000 uh, for sharing your faith with that person. Of course, you will be taken into custody and uh, off the train. And my understanding, according to the law, is that if you're g uh, gathering together for a meal, uh, you cannot even say a blessing. You cannot even say grace uh, for the meal in the presence of somebody who's not a Christian. Correct. Any discussion of God with non-believers is considered missionary activity, and this will be punishable by law. Hanu, can you give us a, a sense of why this is happening? What's the reason for these restrictions? One of the things is that the, the Russian government is deeply suspicious of evangelical Christians or evangelical Christianity, mm -hmm. everything that is outside Russian orthodoxy. And so therefore, they are, they are putting curbs on this. They think, uh, most likely they think that whatever happened in the Ukraine was supported by the evangelical community, and therefore this must never allow, be allowed to happen in Russia. Uh, what does it mean? Obviously, we've talked about what this means for evangelical Christians in Russia. What does it mean for outside groups who work in Russia? Are they also beholden uh, to the same laws? Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, there are very few uh, international Christian organizations in, in Russia at this time. I think we are one of the very few offices that are open, are open and functioning in Moscow and in Russia at this time. Uh, however, if you are, for example, a Russian living outside, uh, outside of Russia and you somehow are uh, an advocate to or you are assisting uh, Christians inside Russia to share their faith, uh, you will also be uh, prosecuted. That is, if you come back to Russia as an as a expatriate you know, living outside Russia, you will face prosecution once you cross the border. In, on Russian territory. Hanu, what does this mean for your ministry uh, and others like yourself who are working in Russia? How do you how do you go forward? We have been in Russia for the last and the Soviet Union for the last 40 years ministering to that country uh, and for the last 20 years we've had an office in Moscow 25 years actually. So we don't know what the consequences will be for us. Uh, but uh, apparently we will be under the same laws as everybody else, so we have to prepare for whatever comes. This is a very important story. Thank you so much uh, for your insights. Uh, thank you. Coming up, just miles from picture-perfect beaches, a scene you won't see in postcards. But God is using missionaries to bring beauty from brokenness. That story, right after this. God has a plan. God has a future and a destiny for every one of us. We need times of testing. You can't get strong without it. I truly believe angels were there with me. Are you willing to risk your pride and take a step of faith? See true stories of people who overcame impossible odds in victory through life storms. Available now. God has a plan to do you good, not harm. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Kids, we want them to grow up knowing God's Word. But in today's busy world, sometimes we could use some help. The free Superbook Kids Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, 
Discovering Heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available on iTunes and the Google Play Store. And welcome back to the broadcast. Hey, so if you want to get away from it all, how about relaxing a relaxing vacation in a tropical paradise? Well, the U.S. Virgin Islands would appear to fit the bill with plush beaches, warm weather and ocean breezes. But look, looks, sorry, can be deceiving. David Brody takes us to the island of St. John for this exclusive look at how one church is ministering there on the other side of paradise. Ads and brochures selling dream vacations want you to see paradise about a thousand miles south of Florida. On the surface, the U.S. Virgin Islands appear postcard perfect, but dive a little deeper and you'll find a much different picture. Video of broken down public schools doesn't help fill hotels or pack beaches. The fact is, life for locals is far from paradise. More than 30% of families with young children live below the poverty line. Overall in this territory of 100,000 people or so, the poverty rate is 23% compared to 15% on the mainland. But there is hope. The beaches here on the island of St. John are simply breathtaking. But just steps away from Hawk's Nest Beach, something else breathtaking is happening. Freshwater Church is talking about Jesus, living out the gospel, and sharing an eternal message here with the locals that they so desperately need. Each Sunday, you will find them here, right next to the beach, praising Jesus. Pastor Terry Lansdale and his wife, Marta, are missionaries in St. John. God called them during their very first visit to the island. God immediately spoke in a quiet voice and just simply said, Terry, this is a place for you. What they found was far from paradise. Our apartment became a triage for spiritually broken people. People were desperate. For answers, including one man fighting an addiction that Pastor Terry will never forget. This man uh, knocked on the door and uh, said, Terry, if you don't have something positive that you can share with me, this is my last moment. But God intervened, and uh, so I lived life with him for the next week. Father, I thank you for each one that you've drawn here this morning. I mean, unfortunately, uh, brokenness it doesn't matter if you're in paradise. Amber Pinnegas was living in New York City three years ago, but God kept leading her to St. John. There's a lot of people down here who don't really know how to deal with their brokenness. Uh, there is a lot of alcohol. There's a lot of drugs on the island. We've seen lives saved. We've seen people that are hurt just reach out to us and they not know us that well at all. But because God was in it and we were definitely prayed up, and definitely going, moving forward, uh, we're blessed by being obedient. That obedience includes sharing the good news with poor children attending public school. We can go down during their lunch recess and they allow us to play, play with the children. They so also allow us to share the gospel. They allow, allow us to share Jesus stories with those little children. And that's why Freshwater Church makes ministering to people and fostering community a top priority. Get your arms around people and love people. Let them understand the value they have in God and you will be shocked how people will begin to respond and come out. It's been working. When the church started three years ago, they had sparse attendance. Now, dozens and dozens keep flowing in. This church made a difference in my life. It turned my life around. Katie Connell has been on the island of St. John 23 years now. And I told God, if you let me live there, I'll dig ditches, I'll clean toilets. I don't care what I have to do. And sure enough, I got here and um, I did clean toilets. <laughs> Toilet cleaning turned into running four companies. Eventually, life got too busy and Katie started focusing on herself. Then she learned a valuable lesson. Religion is kind of kept in the dark here. Uh, they might go to church on Sunday, but they don't talk about it during the week. Mm. And this was a church that was teaching me, not only do you talk about it during the week, you talk about it with your employees, you run your company that way, you do everything according to God's will. For Pastor Terry and Marta, that's what it's all about, doing God's will even if it means being far away from their grown-up kids. I like hugging them and I miss it. Uh, but at the same time, God has just blessed us so much and 
will leave a legacy for our children to carry on that is, it's all good. It sure is, especially when you have Jesus and are spreading his word to the underprivileged. The church is indeed providing much needed fresh water. Everybody needs a drink of fresh water, and that we thought that that's what we were bringing to people was the word of Jesus. And, and uh, Jesus said in himself, if you just give someone a cup of water in my name. Every day, every day gonna let my little light shine. David Brody, CBN News, on the island of St. John. There you are. Now you can share the good news of what God is doing around the world. Simply go to our CWN Facebook page and share these stories with your friends and family. We'll be back right after this. CBN presents Victory Through Life Storms, the newest teaching from Pat Robertson. You're about to meet people who've gone through some of the toughest struggles life had to offer. The pain is something I just can't explain. With 700 Club co-host Terry Mewson. We all go through seasons of struggle in our lives. I never wanted to be divorced. They loaded me up on painkillers. She said, you are eaten up with cancer. In Victory Through Life Storms, Pat Robertson will equip you with the tools you need to come through your personal storm victoriously. In the midst of trouble, God isn't limited. It's such abundance. See the stories of people who obtained their victory over seemingly insurmountable odds. Take a step of faith. What he did for me, he will do for others. Victory Through Life Storms. Jesus said, look, all things are possible. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. Available now. To hit middle school and start having same-sex attractions was just very confusing because I had, had accepted the Lord when I was a little girl. Right in the middle of this holiness code is a reference to homosexual practice. I don't think Christians have anything to fear from research, from science done well. They're like, oh, this is awful. You don't let him in the house, do you? Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life, live it fully. CBN.com. And finally this week, Operation Blessing has been helping victims of the historic and disastrous flood in Charleston, West Virginia. At least 25 people died there and many homes were destroyed. But Operation Blessing delivered semi-trucks full of food and relief supplies. And volunteers helped people clean their damaged homes over the 4th uh, of July weekend. Good work that they are doing not just uh, in West Virginia, but around the country and around the world. Well, folks, that's it for this week's edition of Christian World News. I hope you've enjoyed our inspiring stories from around the world. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you.